What's good, everybody? Welcome into our very first tutorial of 2021 here at Sportsline. I am the coach, and we tell you all the time, we want to educate and we want to entertain. It's not just a tagline. We truly believe in it. So today, we're going to break down everything baseball betting at William Hill. There's nobody better than our guy, one of the greatest partners you could ever have, the maestro, Larry Harstein. Let's bring him in right now. And Larry, we love the fact when we get tweets and people talking to us on social media, but a lot of people say, listen, I just don't understand. And that's what we want to start doing. Our very first video, it's baseball. So let's jump right into it. And I want to start by you taking me through the very, very basics, the money line, the run line, and the total or the over-under, which is usually all in one spot at William Hill. Okay, great, Coach. Well, uh, look at it right now. We start with the money line. This is the most popular way to bet baseball. You know, you talk about NBA, NFL, college hoops, everyone's the most popular way is against the spread. But in baseball, it's the money line. Look at the Reds. The favorite will always have the minus. So minus 140 on the Reds. That means you risk 140 to win 100. And the comeback with the dog. Arizona plus 130, that means you risk 100 and you get paid 130 if Arizona wins. So now moving it over a little bit, the favorite, which is the Reds, will always be laying one and a half runs on the run line. That means if Cincinnati wins by two runs, you win this bet. And of course, it's harder to do. So you're getting plus money, plus 140. Again, risk 100, get paid 140. And then if you like Arizona, on the run line, that means all they have to do is lose the game by one run. You're getting plus one and a half runs. You get minus 165 to do that. They make it expensive. You have to risk 165 to win 100 on the run line. There are a lot of people. I know I, I, I read a, a, a recap from Matt Severance. He said he almost exclusively likes to do the run line because the numbers play out that really that one run a lot of times isn't a significant difference. I believe that it is. How do you normally like to bet as far as straight or do you like the run line? You know, most of the time I do stick to the money line, but you get a team like the Dodgers every single night. They're around minus 200, mm -hmm. which means risk 200 to win 100. And the only way to play them is to play them on the run line. And that will usually drop it all the way to about minus 125. And if you look at what they did last year, 34 of 43 wins by two runs or more. Similar start this season. So that's one way to attack it. There are a lot of people that never want to lay more than about 160 on a baseball game because you know the variance is so great and then if we just look at the total we're looking at the over under and that's just total run scored in the game you could see it set at eight and a half and it looks like this is a game where people think there are going to be more runs scored because it's minus 120 that means the the over is favored and you have to risk 120 to win 100 if you want to go under eight and a half plus 100 means even money risk 100 get 100 and early on in 2021, in the month of April, the under has been the bet as the bats have really been slow to come out of the blocks for a lot of baseball teams across Major League Baseball. But, Maestro, let me ask you this. What happens if I play the over and it's eight and a half? The score is 12 to six. I've already won the bet. We get to the seventh inning. Here comes the rain. <laughs> now, it's an official game, but the game did not finish. What happens? Yeah, this has happened to me and a lot of people, and it's very frustrating. For over-unders and run lines to count, the game has to go eight and a half innings. So even though you already cashed the over, even though it's an official game, they rained it out after seven innings, let's say, that will just be refunded as a push. The money line, though, will stand. If you had the right side, your team is up, the game is called, it's an official game, you do get paid out on the money line. All right. Now, we also know in baseball, it's really about the pitchers. And at William Hill, they do an incredible job of giving you options. Take me through what it means to make a bet, but the pitchers have to start. Right. Certainly in this year with the uncertainty, we've already seen several pitchers scratched on the day of the game. I always default to listing to playing it with listed pitchers, meaning if one of your guys doesn't start, if one of the presumed starters doesn't start, the bet is off. It's just a push. But if you don't care, if you only care if one starter starts or if you don't care who starts, you can do it as action. And you see it listed on the site there. Action at action means it doesn't matter who starts. The bet will count. All right. Very good. Now, when you talk about pitchers, there's some teams that have great starting pitchers. But their bullpens 
are just not very good at all. And that's when the first five inning bet comes into play. Take everybody through what it means to bet on a first five. Well, you called it, Coach, and this has become ex- extremely popular, especially with the way teams are using bullpens and we don't see starters throwing as many innings. But you can be pretty sure they're going to go around five. So first five innings, if you don't like the bullpen and you really like the starting matchup, you bet the team to be ahead after five innings. Obviously, this can push a lot, but uh, it's a it's a great way to attack it. And usually you look at the total, four and a half, When you have a total of eight or eight and a half, you're typically going to get about a four and a half for the first five innings. It's just the over under the amount of runs through five complete innings. Usually when there's a really, really high level pitcher like a Shane Bieber or a Clayton Kershaw, these are usually the more popular bets because you cannot you don't want to bet on them for the uh, the full game because they can come out, have a great start and then the bullpen uh, can can lose it for them, so to speak. But. When we're talking about over and unders as far as strikeouts, there's a lot of popular bets that people like to make at home. Take me through the over under for the full game, but also, as you just mentioned, you can also do the over under in strikeouts for the first five normally too. Yeah, this is one of the props that I love and a lot of people really love because you can zone in on a certain pitcher, a certain matchup, a certain team that strikes out a lot, and uh, you just bet they're over under strikeouts. Now, Uh, you'll see these higher in the National League or in games where they're facing a pitcher because obviously he's a prime strikeout candidate and there's a lot of variables, you know, if they get pinch hit for, if, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the team gets behind. There's a lot of things that can come into play, but this is one of the most popular bets over or under strikeouts. A guy like Corbin Burns, uh, you know, has been certainly money on that in every start this season. Mm -hmm. There's so many things I like about the William Hill website but the exotics, the 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 not normal bets are the ones that I like. But there's there's bets like you can bet on uh, who who scores runs in the first inning. How popular are these type of bets to the uh, to the normal public that is betting? You know, it's getting more and more because there's so much information out there. Like the Yankees have scored one run in the first 17 games in the first inning. 16 times they haven't scored in the first inning. The Rangers had a streak like that. You can bet on whether one team will score. You can bet on whether there will be any runs at all in the first inning. That's one of the, uh, you know, one of the more popular ones. And you can also bet on things like, will this guy hit a homer? Uh, and get really good plus money if you like the matchup. And you can also parlay that. Will this guy hit a homer and the Cubs win? Or Trout homers and the Angels win? You're getting great paybacks on that. There's just, I mean, you look at the at the website, just, you know, it feels like millions of options. I, I'm sure it's only hundreds, but uh, there's plenty there to dive into. But be very careful at home. When you play, we say all the time, sprinkle. Just sprinkle a little bit. You don't want to get into the habit of playing exotics at your full bet size that you would bet on the game. Cause that, am I right? Meister, that's a recipe for disaster. Great point coach. It's fun to take a shot on these with, you know, the plus 700s, the plus 600s. Uh, but long-term uh, those should not be your bread and butter bets. My last one, because whenever we're talking MMA betting, you have really high odds and then you parlay two fighters to bring those odds down. Baseball. When you've got a high, like you mentioned, the Dodgers are always at plus 280, or excuse me, minus 280 and minus 300. Uh, How do you feel about parlaying in baseball the Dodgers and the Padres to bring those odds down? Yeah, I feel a lot better about it than a straight bet. You know, uh, baseball is a crazy game. You get an umpire who's, you know, has dinner reservations, you know, wants to get out of town. (laughs) And, uh, you know, there's been some cases this year uh, where, this guy had eight strikeouts and only one of the third strikes was actually in the K zone. I mean, things happen. So yeah, before you lay 300, uh, I would much rather parlay that with some other big favorites and bring the juice way down. All right. Because not always is the juice worth the squeeze. You're damn right. All right. That is everything that you could possibly need to know about baseball betting courtesy of William Hill. And we always do it in 10 minutes or less. Don't forget tune into the early edge. Every single day, we're in your feed before 11 a.m., and we will see you, the maestro, the jeweler, the coach, you know where. We'll see you at the pay window. Good luck.